Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah intercedes for Jerusalem. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hekelah, or Hakaliah. Now it happened that in the month of Kislev, in the twelfth twentieth year, while I was in Shushan, the capital, that Hanani, one of my brothers, together with some of the men from Judah, arrived, and I asked them about the Judeans, the remnant who had survived the captivity, and about Jerusalem. They said to me, the remnant who have survived the captivity there in the province are in great distress and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. Upon hearing these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. I prayed and fasted before the God of heaven. Then I said, Adonai God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps the covenant and loving kindness with those who love him and keep his mitzvah. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes be open to the prayer of your servant that I am praying before you today, both day and night on behalf of your servants, the Bani Israel. I am confessing the sins of Bani Israel that we have sinned against you. Indeed, yes, I, against you, yes, I and my ancestral house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you. We have not kept the mitzvah, the statutes, or the rulings that you commanded your servant Moses. Please recall the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you act unfaithfully, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and obey my mitzvah and do them, then even if your dispersed people are at the ends of the heavens, I will gather them from there and bring them back to the place where I have chosen for my name to dwell. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and by your mighty hand. Please, my Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today and great grant compassion in the presence of this man. Now I was the cupbearer to the king. Nehemiah chapter 2. Favor with the king. Then in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, Artaxerxes, when wine was set before him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before, so the king said to me, Why is your face so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very frightened, but I said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad? Well, the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. The king asked me, What is your request? And I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king, If it seems good to you, good to the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, send me to the city of Judah where my ancestors are buried, that I may rebuild it. Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked me, How long will your journey take, and when will you return? Since it pleases the king to send me, I set a time for him. I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let him give me letters for the governors of the trans that I will that will enable me to pass through until I arrive in Judah, as well as a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's force, that he will give me lumber to make beams for the gates of the fortress adjacent to the temple, for the wall of the city, and for the residence I will occupy. The king granted me the request because the good hand of my God was upon me. Then I went to the governors of the trans-Euphrates, and I gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officials and cavalry with me. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite officials heard this, they were very displeased that a man had come to seek the welfare of Benistria. Inspecting the walls, I came to Jerusalem, and after I was there for three days, I got up during the night along with a few men, but I did not tell anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were no animals with me except the animal I was riding. By night, I went out by the valley gate toward the jackal spring and the dung gate, expecting the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down, and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. And then I moved to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, where there was not enough room for my animal to pass with me. So I went up the valley by night, examining the wall. Finally, I turned back and returned to the valley gate. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing, but as yet I had not told the Jews, the Kohanim, the nobles, the officials, or the rest of the workers. Then I said to them, You see this bad situation we are in? Jerusalem is desolate and its gates have been burnt. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we will no longer be a disgrace. Then I told them how good the hand of my God was on me and the words that the king had said to me. Then they replied, Let us begin building. So they prepared themselves for this good work. But when Sanballat the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite official, and Geshem the Arab heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. They said, What is this you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? I responded to them, saying, The God of heaven will bring us success. We, his servants, will arise and build, but you have no part, right, or historical claim in Jerusalem. Nehemiah chapter 3, The Builders of the Wall. Then Heliashib the Kohen Gadol and his brothers, the Kohenim, arose and built the sheep gate. They dedicated it and set it 
up its doors, dedicating it as far as the Tower of the Hundred and as far as the Tower of Hananel. The men of Jericho built next to it, and Zakur the son of Imri built next to them. The sons of Hasenana, Hasena built the fish gate. They laid its beams and set up its doors, its bolt and its bars. Next to them, Meramoth, sons of Uriah, son of Hakaz, made repairs. Adjacent to them, Meshalem, son of Berechiah, son of Meshazabel, made repairs. And next to them, Zadok, son of Baana, made repairs. The men of Tekoa made repairs next to them, but their nobles will not put their shoulders to the work of their masters. Joida, son of Pasea, and Meshalem, son of um, Bezadea, repaired the old gate. They laid its beams and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Adjacent to them worked Melatiah, the Gibeonite, and Jadon, the, Maranoth- the Maranothite, men from Gibeon, and Mizpah, who were under the jurisdiction of the governor of the trans Euphrates. Uziel, son of Harahiah, one of the goldsmiths worked adjacent to him, and Hananiah, one of the perfumers, worked next to him. They restored Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. Rephaiah, son of Hur, rulers of the half of the district of Jerusalem, made repairs next to them. Jedeiah, the son of Harum, Harumaf, repaired the section adjacent to them opposite his house. And Hatush, son of Hashbaneah, worked next to them. Makijah, son of Harim, and Hashub, son of Pehath Moab, repaired another section in the Tower of the Furnaces. Shalom, son of Halohesh, the ruler of the half of the district of Jerusalem, and his daughters repaired the next section. Hanun and the inhabitants of Zanoa repaired the valley gate. They built it and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. They also repaired a thousand cubits of wall up to the dung gate. Malkija, son of Rechab, ruler of the district of Beth Cherem, repaired the dung gate. He built it and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Shalom, son of Kolhoza, the ruler of the district of Mizpah, repaired the fountain gate. He built it, covered it, and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. He also repaired the wall of the pool of Shelah by the king's garden as far as the stairs going down from the city of David. Beyond him, Nehemiah, son of Azbuk, the ruler of half of the district of Beth Zer, made repairs as far as the tombs of David and the artificial pool and the house of the warriors. After him, the Levites made repairs under Rehum, son of Banyan. Beside him, Hashabiah, the ruler of half of the district of Kela, made repairs for his district. After him, repairs were made by their brothers under Bevaya, or Bavai, Bav, Bavai, son of Henadad, the ruler of the half district of Kela. Adjacent to him, Ezer, son of Joshua, the ruler of Mizpah, repaired another section opposite the ascent to the armory at the corner buttress. After him, Baruch, son of Zakai, zealously repaired the other section from the corner, but just up to the door of the house of Elishib, Eliashib, the Kohen Gadol. After him, Merimoth, son of Uriah, son of Hakaz, repaired another section from the door of the house of Eliashib to the end of the house of Eliashib. And after him, the Kohenim worked men from the surrounding district. After them, Benjamin and Hashu made repairs in front of their house. After them, Azariah, son of Maseiah, Maseiah, son of Ananiah worked beside his house. Beyond him, Benuim, or ben, Benoi, Benuai, son of Henadad, repaired another section from the house of Azariah up to the inner buttress and the corner. Palal, son of Uzai, made repairs opposite the inner buttress and the lower tower coming out from the upper palace, which is by the court of the guard. After him, Pendea, son of Parosh, and the temple servants living on the Ophel made repairs to the area opposite the water gate toward the east and the projecting tower. After him, the men of Tekoa repaired another section from opposite the great projecting tower to the wall of the Ophel. Above the house gate, the Kohenim worked each in front of his own house. After them, Zadok, son of Emer, made repairs opposite his house. And after him, Shemaiah, son of Shechaniah, the guard of the east gate, made repairs. After him, Hananiah, son of Shelemiah, and Hanun, the sixth son of Zalaf, repaired another portion. After him, Meshalem, son of Berechiah, made repairs in front of the hills living quarters. After him, Malkija, one of his goldsmiths, made repairs up to the temple of the temple up to the house of the temple servants and the merchants opposite the inspection gate as far as the room above the corner. Between the room above the corner and the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and the merchants worked. Opposition mocks the rebuilding. Now when Sanbalat heard that we were building the wall, he became very angry and was greatly enraged. He mocked the Jews in the presence of his colleagues and the army of Samaria, saying, 
What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they revive the stones from the heaps of the rubble that are burnt? Then Tobiah the Ammonite, who is beside him, said, Even if a fox climbs on what they are building, it would break down their stone wall. Hear our God, for we are despised. Turn their insult back on their own head. Give them up as a plunder in the land of captivity. Do not cover your guilt or blot out their sin from before you, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So we rebuilt the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height, for the people had a heart to work. Nehemiah chapter 4. Now when Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Edabians, and the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the restoration of the walls of Jerusalem was proceeding, and that the breaches had begun to be closed, they became extremely angry. They all conspired together to come up and fight against Jerusalem and to stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and stationed a guard against him day and night. Meanwhile, the people of Judah said, The strength of the laborers is failing. There is so much rubble that we are unable to rebuild the wall. Our adversaries also said they will not know or perceive anything until we come among them. And kill them and put an end to the work. So it happened that the Jews living near them came and told us ten times over wherever you turn, they will attack us, working and watching. So I stationed people in the lower places behind the wall and the exposed places. I stationed the people by families with their swords, spears, and bows. When I looked things over, I rose and said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the great and awesome Lord and fight on behalf of your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Now when our enemies heard that their plan was known to us, and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to his own work. From that day on, half of my men were doing the work, while half of them took hold of the spears, shields, bows, and breastplates, and the leaders were behind the entire house of Judah. Those building the wall and those bearing heavy burdens kept one hand on the work and the other holding a weapon. So each of the builders had his sword strapped to his side while they were building, and the shofar blower was beside me. Then I said to the peoples, then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the shofar, join us there. Our God will fight for us. So we continued the work with half of the men holding spears from dawn until the stars came out. Also at that time, I said to the people, let every man and his helper lodge inside Jerusalem so they can be guards for us by night and workers by day. So neither I nor my brothers nor my workers, nor my the guards who were with me took off our clothes. Each man even had his weapon at the water. Nehemiah chapter 5, considering the poor. Then there was a great outcry from the people and their wives to their fellow Jews. There were those who said, We and our sons and our daughters are numerous. We must take grains so we may eat and live. There were others who said, We are mortgaging our fields or vineyards and our houses in order to obtain grain during the famine. Still others were saying, we have borrowed money to pay the king's tax on our fields and vineyards, and now that we share the f same flesh as our brothers and our children, are just like their children, still we subject our sons and our daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have already been enslaved, but our hands are tied since the fields of the vineyards belong to others. I was very angry when I heard the out outcry in these words. I pondered them in my heart, and then I opposed the nobles and the officials, saying to them, usury, each of you is putting his brother in debt. So I convened a great assembly to deal with them. I said to them, as much as possible, we have bought back our fellow Jews who had been sold to the nations. So now you also are selling your brothers so they will be sold back to us. Then they became silent and could not find anything to say. And I said, the thing that you are doing is not good. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God in order to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? Even I, my brothers and my servants are lending the money and grain. Let this usury stop now. Now return to them this very day. Their fields, their vineyards, their olive garden, groves, and their houses, as well as a hundredth that you have extracted from them on the money, the grain, the new wine, and the fresh oil. Then they said, We will restore these and require nothing from them. We will do just as you say. Then I summoned the Kohanim and I made them swear to do according to this promise. Also, I shook out my garment and said, In this way, may God shake out from his head, house and from his property everyone who does not keep this promise. In this way, may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly replied, Amen. And they praised Adonai. So the people did according to this promise. Nehemiah's unselfishness. Moreover, from day, from the day when I was appointed to be the governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year to the 32nd year of King Artaxerxes, 12 years, neither I nor my relatives have eaten the bread allocated to the governor. The earlier governors who preceding me placed heavy burdens on the people and took 40 shekels of silver 
Their tenants also lorded over the people, but I did not do so out of fear of God. Instead, I devoted myself to the work on the swall without even buying a field. All my tenants were gathered there for the work. Furthermore, 150 Judean and Judeans and officials, as well as those came to us from the nations around us, were at my table. Now each day, one ox and six sheep choice, as well as some fowl, were prepared for me. And every ten days, an abundance of every kind of wine was prepared. Despite all this, I did not require the governor's food allowance, because the work was already heavy on this people. Remember me for good, oh my God, for all that I have done for the people, for this people. Nehemiah chapter 6, attempts to intimidate Nehemiah. Now it was reported to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and no breach remained in it, even though at the time I had not positioned the doors and the gates. Sanballat and Geshem sent words to me saying, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages in the plains of Ono. But they were scheming to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing an important work, so I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? They sent me the same messages four times, and each time I returned a similar response to them. But the fifth time, Sanballat sent his young aide to me in this way. He had an open letter in his hand, and it was written. It had been heard among the nations, and Geshem substantiates it, that you and the Jews are planning to revolt. That is why you are rebuilding the wall. Furthermore, according to these reports, you are to become their king and have been appointed prophets and make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now the king is going to hear about these reports, so come now, let us confer together. Then I sent a message to him, saying, Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are devising them from your own heart, for they were all trying to intimidate us, thinking their hands will become weak from the work, and it will not be done. So now strengthen my hands. Then I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, son of Mahitabel. He was confined to his home. He said, let us meet in the house of God within the temple. Let us shut the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, they will come to kill you at night. But I said, should a man like me flee, who in my position should go to the temple and live? I will not go in. I recognized that God had not really sent him, for he had pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had heard him, <laughs> had hired him. He had been hired so that I might become so frightened that I would do this and thereby sin. Then they would give me a bad name in order to discredit me. Remember my God, Tobiah and Sanballat, according to these words of theirs, and also according to the works of theirs, and also the prophetess, Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets who have been trying to intimidate me. So the wall was completed on the 25th day of the month of Elul in just 52 days. When all our enemies heard, all the surrounding nations were afraid and fell greatly in their own eyes. Because they realized that this work had been accomplished by our God. Also in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah and replies from Tobiah kept coming to them. For many in Judah were under oath to him because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, son of Ada, and his son Jehohanan had married the daughter of Meshalem, son of Bedekiah. Moreover, they kept telling me about the good deeds that had been reported, and then reporting my words to him. Also, Tobiah sent letters to intimidate me. Nehemiah chapter 7. Hanani, Hananiah, and the returning exiles. After the wall had been rebuilt, the door set up, and the gatekeeper, singers, and Levites appointed, I put in charge over Jerusalem my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, mm. And the commander of the fortress, for he was a man of integrity and feared God more than many. I said to them, the gates of Jerusalem must not be opened until the sun is hot. While they're, those are still on duty, have them shut and bar the doors. Also appoint residents of Jerusalem and guards, some at their posts and some near their homes. Now as the city was spacious and large, but there were few people within it, and no houses were being built. So my God put into my heart to assemble these nobles, the officials, and the people to be registered by genealogy. I found the scroll of the genealogical records of those who formerly returned. I found the following written there. There are people, these are the people of the province who returned from the captivity of exile, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had taken away, and who returned to Jerusalem and to Judah, each man in his own town. Those who came with Zerubbabel were Joshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Rehemiah, Nahamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mizpedeth, Bigvi, Nahum, Baana. The number of men of Benai Israel was the sons of Parosh, 2,172. The sons of Shephtiah, 372. The sons of Ada, 652. The sons of Pehat, Moab, from the sons of Joshua and Joab, 2,818. The sons of Elam, 
1,254, the sons of Zatu, 845, the sons of Zakai, 760, the sons of Benui, 648, the sons of Bebai, 628, the sons of Asgod, 328, the sons of Adonai, ooh, Adonai Cam, 667, the sons of Bigvi, 2067, the sons of Adin, 655, the sons of Athar of Hezekiah, 98, the sons of Meshun, 328, the sons of Bezai, 324, the sons of Herepha, Heref, 112, the sons of Gibeon, 95, men of Bethlehem, Anetapha, 188, the people of Anathoth, 128, the pe men of Beth Azmaveth, 42, the men of Kiriath Jerim, um, Kephira, and Beeroth, 743, the men of Ramah and Geba, 621. The men of Mikmas, 122. The men of Bethel and Ai, 123. The men of the other Nebo, 52. The sons of the other Elam, 1,254. The sons of Hadim, 320. The sons of Jericho, 345. The sons of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721. The sons of San Sanaa, 3,930. The Kohanim, the sons of Judea, Judea um, the house of Jeshua, 973. The sons of Emer, 1,052. The sons of Pesher, 1,247. The sons of Hadim, 1,017. The Levites, the sons of Joshua of Kadmiel from the sons of Hodea, 74. The singers, the sons of Asaph, 148. The gatekeepers, the sons of Shalom, the sons of Atir, the sons of Talmon, the sons of Akub, the sons of Tita, and the sons of Shobai, 138. The sanctuary servants, the sons of Ziha, the sons of Hasufa, the sons of Tabeot, the sons of Keros, the sons of Sia, the sons of Padan, the sons of Lebanon, the sons of Hagabah, the sons of Salmai, the sons of Hanan, the sons of Giddel, the sons of Gehar, the sons of Rea, the sons of Razin, the sons of Nakoda, the sons of Gazam, the sons of Uzzah, the sons of Pasea, the sons of Besai, the sons of Mayunim, the sons of Nefeshashim, the sons of Bakbuk, the sons of Hakufa, the sons of Harher, the sons of Bazlith, the sons of Mehida, the sons of Harsha, the sons of Barcos, the sons of Sisera, the sons of Tema, the sons of Neziah, and the sons of Hatifa, the sons of Solomon's servants, the sons of Sotai, the sons of Sophereth, the sons of Pedida, the sons of Jala, the sons of Darkan, the sons of Giddel, the sons of Shephatiah, the sons of Hatil, the sons of Pokereth, Hazabiam, and the sons of Ammon, all the temple servants and the sons of Solomon's servants, 392. Now the following were the ones who came up from Telmela, Telharsha, Cherub, Adon, and Imar, but they were not able to identify their ancestral houses or whether their descendants were from Israel, the sons of Delea, Delea, the sons of Tobiah, and the sons of Nakoda, 642. Also the Kohanim of the sons of Hebea, the sons of Hakaz, the sons of Barzillai, their ancestor took a wife from the daughters of Barzillai the Gileadite and subsequently was called by their name. These sought their names in the genealogies, but were not found, so they were disqualified from the priesthood. The governor said to them that they should not eat from the most holy things until Kohen arose with Iram and Thuman. The whole congregation together was 42,360, not including their male and female servants. These were 7,337, as well as 245 male and female singers. There were 435 camels and 6,720 donkeys. Some from among the family leaders contributed work. The governor gave to the treasury gold drachmas, 1,000, bowls, 50, and priestly tunics, 500. Those from the heads of the ancestral lines gave to the treasury for the work gold drachmas, 20,000, silver minus, 2,000, and the rest of the people gave gold drachmas, 20,000, silver minus, 2,000, and priestly tunics, 67. So the Kohanim, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, and the temple servants, even all Israel, dwelt in their towns. Ezra reads the Torah. Then the seventh month came, and Benai Israel were in their towns.